rarely talk about my family or my my wife and relationships that I have been in or gone through because when you meet the people we all have a story to tell we all are a living epistle as it were we all are a living Bible that we will share and care and dare to be an open book to those around us that are able to read about what we did and possibly what we thought and what we were thinking when we did what we did as we accomplished or we learned about God in our own way, our own example. But the end of it will always be that God accomplished his will in us. So the end of the story is always the best. <laughs> and so are you. At the end of your story, you'll be the best. You win. And so it's like the popular story that we like a happy ending. And you have a happy ending in the Lord. In my family, I probably, because God did it to me, was saved because of love. Because of his love towards me, I responded out of love to him. I was just thrilled with the whole idea of being loved. And because he loved me and I felt that feeling, I was immediately responsive to him and my salvation experience was one of just ecstatic, emotional, <laughs> uh, let's just say, way over the top. But for the Jesus movement, not for these new days where they're rolling around on floors and doing weird things. But for the Jesus movement, it was just a joy that you could just feel God come into you and you knew it and your eyes were open and you saw differently and everything. Now my sisters were different. They came to the Lord out of a choice to follow in my mother's footsteps. Now I witnessed to them and I you know, threw all kinds of scriptures at them and preached instead of taught and probably proclaimed rather than explained and gradually God saved them anyways. <laughs> but one of my sisters seemed to have inherited kind of like the Doubting Thomas of our family. She was the one who worried constantly about everything, you know, before she was saved. And now that she's been saved for a long time, she worries less, but still worries. The same thing was true about Doubting Thomas. Thomas was still a disciple and he was still an apostle, but he still had his doubts at times about different things. So my sister Mary Lynn, Chickadee, as we call her, she would worry and she would always have this anxiety that she followed only those things that my mother approved and said to do. Now, there may have been every once in a while she would recognize that there was something she didn't want to do, but, you know, so she didn't follow my mother, but 24-7, almost, and I exaggerate, but almost every day that my mother was alive, in questions of faith, she followed what my mother said, and she did according to what my mother did which was to read the Bible and also mainly to listen to tapes, and in this case, Chuck Smith tapes. And she would, whether she was working or not, she'd pop in a tape and listen to it on her way to work or pop in a tape and listen to it on her way home from work. And she was always driving, so she was always taking my mother around, but they were always able to communicate to each other faith and share about God until the day that my mother one day, the gift of the Holy Spirit came upon her and she spoke in tongues, not because of the gift, but just because it was one of the gifts that God decided to use on her. And My sister saw that and ran like crazy the opposite direction and didn't want to have anything to do with that part. <laughs> God bless her. <laughs> you can choose not to have that. <laughs> but one day my mother died. She went to be with the Lord, obviously, but she just up and dropped dead and God took her. And my sister was suddenly cut adrift from her support network. She no longer had that intimacy, that reality of knowing my mother's faith in a personal way that she suddenly had to discover for herself Jesus on her own. Because she had a husband. But the husband was more quiet, meek. Not meek in the sense of what most people think meek, but just gentle. 
and he kept to himself in some ways about different matters of faith. But for my sister, she had to find her own way. And she turned to the pattern of my mother, but she didn't have my mother there to instruct her now. So she learned to develop her own personal relationship. And to this day, I admire her and God bless her. She has become a phenomenal woman of God, though she still is a Thomas in her own way. But we all have to, sooner or later, step out on our own, one on one with God, and be alone with Him to develop a personal relationship with God. Even as I caused my wife to develop her own relationship separate from mine, without being in my shadow, but that her unique perspective and knowledge of Jesus is different than mine, so I could be blessed by her wisdom as well as her from mine. Always remember that you walk with God, not with each other. With each other, you get to share God. The experience must come, and he saw him no more, 2 Kings 2.12. It is not wrong to depend upon Elijah as long as God gives him to you. But remember, the time will come when he will have to go, when he stands no more to you as your guide and leader, because God does not intend he should. You say, I cannot go on without Elijah. God says, you must. Alone at your Jordan, verse 14. Jordan is a type of separation where there is no fellowship with anyone else and where no one can take the responsibility for you. You stand or fall on your own. You have to put to the test now what you have learned when you were with your Elijah. You have been to Jordan over and over again with Elijah, but now you are up against it alone. It is no use saying you cannot go. This experience has come, and you must go. If you want to know whether God is the God you have faith to believe in, and the God you know to be real, and you want him to be, then go through your Jordan alone. As you walk alone, you will talk with God, and God alone will be your guide. Alone at your Jericho, verse 15, Jericho is a place where you have seen your Elijah do great things. When you come to your own Jericho, you have a strong disinclination or a strong reason to take Oh, okay. You have a, that's what I thought it said. You have a strong reason to take the initiative and to trust in God. You want someone else to take it for you. You don't want to do it yourself. God has called you. You want someone else to do it. And so you have your reasons. If you remain true to what you have learned with Elijah, you will get the sign that God is with you. And because God is with you, God will direct you and God will speak through you. So it is for you to do in Jericho as you have seen Elijah do when you were with him. Alone at your Bethel, verse 23. At your Bethel, you will find yourself at your wit's end and at the beginning of God's wisdom because you can't figure out what to do now and you know you have to trust him to do it for you. When you get to your wit's end and feel inclined to succumb to panic, don't. Stand true to God and he will bring his truth out in a way that will make your life a sacrament, a testimony to everyone around you an unbelievable witness that you will be able to share for the rest of your life. Put into practice what you have learned with your Elijah and use his cloak and pray. Determine to trust in God and do not look for Elijah anymore. Every one of us has a process that we must go through. Where I was at in the church I was in, which was Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, we had a pastor by the name of Romaine who said that being at Calvary Chapel was like being at a Bible college, that if you'd been there two years, you might be there one year too long, because if you could go through the Bible once, then that's all you need to do, and then you need to go out and do what God has told you to do. Pretty radical. Personally, I think he accomplished a lot with most of the pastors that had ever met Romain, because he was not one to say you could sit on your hiney or your fanny and just participate in the local church and just stay there for the rest of your life. But he said you must develop into a personal relationship with Jesus and then do what Jesus tells you to do. And he did. And he lived it. And the Lord took him home. And many of those who have gone out into the world to accomplish what God would have them to do personally, one-on-one -on -one with God, thank God for 
Pastor Romaine and for Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa that would cause us to not be content to sit where we were, but to go out and to do what we felt God was leading us to and to bless us as we went. And I thank God personally for my life as having been taught that way. Because though I may have come from a great blessing of wealth of knowledge of the scriptures and how to study them and apply them to my personal life, I too likewise had to go out and experience life for myself so that I could be a witness of himself in me, meaning Jesus. And that we can all thank some Elijah in our past that helped get us in the right direction. But finally, we have to walk alone. And today, you, where you are today, need to take the time to stop whatever you're doing and be alone with God. Because if you don't have God with you, and you're living off someone else's experiences, when God takes them away, it'll shatter your world, but God will put the pieces together for you.